The 72 demons of hell listed in the Ars Goetia appear in the first section of the Lesser Key of Solomon, a famous grimoire on demonology. Compiled in the mid-17th century, this text, attributed to the wise King Solomon, describes a system for invoking the 72 demons, harnessing their abilities, and ultimately controlling them. The demons in the Goetia are not necessarily evil in the modern sense. Rather, they each have their own domains of expertise. Some can teach various arts or sciences, while others can find hidden things or tell of events in the past, present, or future. Each demon has a specific set of abilities and areas of knowledge. The demons are organized hierarchically, with titles such as King, Duke, Marquis, President, and so on. These titles give an indication of their rank in the infernal hierarchy. But regardless of rank, their areas of expertise vary. Each demon has a specific description or form they can take, ranging from monstrous to human-like. Some are described as powerful beasts, while others might appear as beautiful men or women. Every demon has a unique seal or sigil. These seals are crucial in rituals, as they are used to invoke and control the respective demon. The Heirs Goetia provides detailed rituals for summoning these demons. There are protective measures and specific tools recommended, like the magical circle and triangle, to ensure that the magician remains safe throughout the ritual. The rituals usually involve using the demon seal and calling upon them with incantations. While the Ars Goetia describes methods to control these demons, it's repeatedly stressed that they are deceitful and can be dangerous. The grimoire warns of the dangers of invoking these entities. The magician must always be careful and respectful when working with these demons. So, who are the 72 demons? Let's take a look at each of the demons and what we know about them. Check the timestamps in the description below if you're only interested in particular demons. The first principal spirit is King Baal, who rules over 66 legions of demons. He has three heads, those of a cat, a toad, and a human. Baal grants the invoker the ability to become invisible. In some sources, the names Baal and Beelzebub have been used interchangeably or conflated, but they are distinct entities in the context of the Ars Goetia. Dukagaris is the second spirit. Described as an old man riding a crocodile and carrying a hawk on his fist, this duke has the ability to cause earthquakes. He can also grant linguistic prowess to the invoker, return runaways, and grant noble titles. He commands 31 legions of demons. Prince Visago, the third spirit. Holding the rank of prince, he is considered good-natured. He rules 26 legions of spirits and is summoned to tell magicians of past and future events, and to locate lost objects. Marquis Gamigan, the fourth spirit, is a demon who takes the form of a small horse before transforming into a raspy-voiced human. He holds the title of Marquis. He teaches liberal sciences and arts, and gives accounts of souls that have died in sin. President Marbus, the fifth spirit, governs over 36 legions of demons. He appears as a great lion, but can change into the figure of a man when requested by the conjurer. Marbus can offer knowledge about hidden or secret things. Holding the position of a president, he can transform humans and is said to provide answers regarding health. He causes and heals diseases and also gives wisdom and knowledge in mechanical arts. Duke Valafor, the sixth demon, is a duke depicted as a lion with the head of a man or sometimes as a lion with the head of a donkey. He is known to tempt humans to steal, and is in charge of a good relationship among thieves. He only governs ten legions of demons. Amun, the seventh spirit, is a marquis who governs over forty infernal legions. He can change into the shape of a man, but he appears like a wolf with a serpent's tail, vomiting flames of fire. His name comes from the god Amun, a major Egyptian deity. Duke Barbatos, the eighth spirit, grants the ability to understand the singing of birds, the barking of dogs, and the sound of waters. He can reveal hidden treasures that have been hidden by the enchantment of magicians. Like Amun, he too helps friends and those who hold power to reconcile. 
before he was cast out of heaven, Barbatos belonged to the angelic order of virtues. Paimon, the ninth spirit, holds a king's title. He is described as a handsome man riding a camel, preceded by men playing loud music and clashing cymbals. Sometimes he or his camel wears a crown. He can teach all arts, philosophies, and sciences, and other secret things. He knows all affairs of the world, making him one of the most intelligent and knowledgeable of the demons. Taman can rekindle friendships. He is quite obedient to Lucifer. President Bewer, the Tenth Spirit, governs over 50 legions of demons. He is a cultured demon with an elevated sense of knowledge in philosophical subjects. He teaches natural and moral philosophy, logic, and herbal medicine. He is known to heal diseases. He has a strange appearance, described as having a lion's head and five goat's legs around his body that allow him to walk in every direction. Duke Gushin, the eleventh demon, can provide answers about past, present, and future events. He is depicted as a baboon, or according to some, in the form of a cynocephalus, that is, dog-headed. He reconciles friendships and grants honor and dignity. He can answer any question asked by the magician. He rules over 40 legions of demons. The twelfth spirit is Citri. He is depicted as a leopard with the wings of a griffin, but at the request of the conjurer can take the form of a very beautiful or handsome man. He can cause lust and erotic love, making men to love women and vice versa. Holding a prince's rank, he is associated with igniting passions. He is a powerful prince of hell with 60 legions under his command. King Beleth, the 13th demon, is a powerful leader in the underworld, with 85 legions of demons under his command. He's often portrayed as a cat and is known for making people fall in love. He rides a warhorse, and a variety of music plays before he appears. Amun can predict the future and reconcile controversies. He helps friends and enemies to reconcile and brings about love. He can also enable the magician to summon and interrogate the spirits of those who drowned at sea. Beleth tries to frighten the magician who has summoned him by first appearing fierce. This is to see if the magician is courageous. To command Beleth, the conjurer has to be brave and not show fear. Marquis Larahai is the 14th demon and has 30 legions of demons under his power. He is depicted as a gallant and handsome archer dressed in green, carrying a bow and quiver. He's known for causing wars and conflicts. He also putrefies all arrow wounds. Elagor, the 15th demon of the underworld, is a great duke of hell. He appears like a knight in armor, riding a strong horse. Ruling 60 legions of demons, Elagor finds hidden secrets and solutions to problems. Duke Zepar is the 16th demon, typically depicted with red clothes and armor like a soldier. He's famous for making men and women fall deeply in love with each other. As a duke, he can make women barren, and while he brings people together in love, he also stops families from growing. He commands 26 legions of inferior spirits. Commanding 60 legions of demons, President Bodis is the 17th on the list. He's often described as a large viper, but he can also transform into a human with large teeth, two horns, and a bright, fiery sword in hand. With a title as grand as president, he has the ability to offer insights about past events, the happenings of the present, and even glimpses into the future. He can mend broken bonds, reconcile friendships, and even calm tensions between enemies. Duke Bathan, the 18th demon of the underworld, is pictured as a powerful figure riding a pale horse with a snake-like tail. This tale shows he's both wise and can be dangerous. He has great knowledge about herbs and special stones, which is why many people seek his advice. He's known for his unique skill, the ability to move people wherever they want to go. Because of his knowledge and this special power, he's a highly respected demon. He rules 30 legions of demons. 
Duke Salos, the 19th demon, rules 30 legions of demons. He is portrayed as a soldier riding a crocodile and wearing a ducal crown. Salos specializes in love. He has a pacifist nature and causes men and women to love one another. King Person, the 20th demon, holds a high rank in the supernatural world. He's depicted as a majestic figure, riding a bear, and is often shown with a group of musical spirits. Obeyed by 22 legions of demons, Person has vast knowledge about hidden things and can give people helpful companions, known as familiars. He's also known for being loyal and obedient to powerful figures in the demon hierarchy. President Morax is the 21st demon and has 36 legions of demons. He's often depicted as a man wearing a crown and carrying a scepter, signifying his authority and knowledge. Morax can teach people about arts, sciences, herbs, and precious stones. If you call on Morax, he can help you to understand complex things and gain knowledge in different areas. He is respected in the world of demons for his wisdom and guidance. Prince Epos is an earl and powerful prince of hell with 36 legions of demons under his command. He's known for showing people glimpses of the future and enhancing their intelligence. He can make men witty and valiant. He is commonly depicted with the body of an angel, head of a lion, the tail of a hare, and the feet of a goose. Sometimes he's shown with the body of a lion and at other times as a vulture. Duke Aim, the 23rd demon, is a charming and enigmatic entity. He is typically portrayed as a handsome and charismatic figure. Aim possesses a unique and valuable talent. He can enhance the wit and intelligence of those who seek his influence, making them quick thinkers and bringing humor to dull situations. He commands no specific number of legions of demons, which adds to his mystique and influence within the supernatural realm. His power to grant intellect and humor makes him a sought-after entity, often called upon by those seeking a mental and comedic edge. Marquis Nibirius, the 24th demon, holds the title of the bravest Marquis in Hell, commanding 19 legions of demons. Nibirius specializes in making people skilled in various arts, especially rhetoric, although his voice is hoarse. He can both restore lost honors and cause their loss, a contradiction in his powers. Nabirius appears in two forms, a three-headed dog or a raven with a harsh voice that contrasts his pleasant demeanor. He conveys knowledge about graceful living and is often depicted as a crow or a black crane. Nabirius is also known as Cerberus. There's speculation that he could be the same figure as Hades' hellhound Cerberus, but it's not clear if this is the case. President Glacia Labalas, the 25th demon in Hell's hierarchy, is quite powerful. He leads 36 legions of demons and is known for causing violence and bloodshed. He knows about past and future events and can make people like, dislike, or even love one another. Sometimes he encourages people to commit murder and he can make someone invisible. He's often drawn as a dog with griffin wings, which makes him look powerful and fearsome. Boon is a strong demon leader in Hell, commanding 30 legions of demons. He can command the souls of the dead, move them, and turn them into his obedient demons. Boon also gives people the gifts of wisdom, riches, and of speaking well. He speaks with a pleasant high voice and appears as a three-headed dragon with the heads of a dog, a griffin, and a man. Though some say he has two dragon heads and one human head, Marquis Renov is the 27th demon. He holds the titles of Marquis and Great Earl, leading 20 demon legions. Renov is a master of art, particularly in teaching rhetoric and languages. He can provide trustworthy servants and earn the affection of both allies and enemies. He appears as a monster holding a staff and is known to collect the souls of aging humans and animals close to death. Duke Bareth, also known as Baal Bareth, is a formidable Duke of Hell and the 28th demon on our list. He commands 26 demon legions. 
He offers knowledge of past, present, and future and can transform metals into gold. To communicate with him, it's said that one must wear a silver ring as a sign of respect. Depicted as a red-clad soldier on a red horse, he's said to be especially powerful in the month of June. Duke Astaroth, the 29th demon, is a great Duke of Hell in the first hierarchy with Beelzebub and Lucifer. Together, the three are part of the evil trinity. He rules 40 demon legions and has vast knowledge on liberal sciences and divine secrets. Depicted as a naked, winged man wearing a crown and holding a serpent, Astaroth rides a beast with wings like a dragon and a tail like a serpent. He seduces through laziness, vanity, and twisted philosophies. He also teaches math, crafts, offers invisibility, leads to treasures, and grants control over snakes. His name might derive from the goddess Asherah or Astarte. The 30th demon Marquis Forneas is esteemed for his expertise in art and communication. He has the ability to make those who summon him cherished by both allies and enemies. A prominent Marquis in Hell, Forneas oversees 29 demon legions. He gives individuals a reputable name and earns them affection from both friends and enemies. Often depicted as a massive sea creature, his name likely derives from the Latin word fornus, meaning oven. President Forres is the 31st demon, presenting as a powerful man in human form. He gives knowledge about the properties of herbs and gemstones. Knowledgeable in teaching logic and ethics, Forres can grant people certain abilities like invisibility, longevity, eloquence, and the discovery of hidden treasures or retrieval of lost items. He commands 29 legions of spirits. King Asmodeus, the 32nd demon, is depicted as the powerful Asmodee in the Ars Goetia. He can bestow the Ring of Virtues, offer mathematical insights, grant invisibility, and unveil hidden treasures. He's often portrayed with three distinct heads resembling a bull, a man, and a ram. With a serpent-like tail and fire springing from his mouth, he rides a hellish dragon and wields a lance with a banner. He controls 72 subordinate spirits. Prince Gap is a prominent prince of hell, leading 66 demon legions. He's a ruler of specific regions in hell and earth, guiding four demon kings. He can invoke love or hatred, render people invisible or unaware, transport beings instantly across nations, and provides answers about time. Some believe he can also induce ignorance, He's often shown in human form. Count Furfur is the 34th demon and a significant Earl of Hell, governing 26 demon legions. Although he is a liar, he provides genuine answers if he's compelled to enter a magical triangle. Once in the triangle, he will give true answers in a rough voice. He initiates love between individuals, conjures storms, and reveals mysteries of the divine. Furfur is portrayed as a winged deer or an angel. Sometimes, he's said to change from a deer into an angel when forced to enter the magic triangle. Marquis Marcosius, the 35th demon, is renowned for his combat skill and leads 30 demon legions. He's a potent and adept warrior, known for providing accurate answers to any inquiries. Before his fall from heaven, he belonged to the Angelic Order of Dominations. In spite of his hopes of reascending to heaven after 1,200 years, he remains in hell. He's depicted as a wolf with human features, griffin wings, and a serpent tail, but can transform into a human upon request. Prince Stolas holds the 36th position and is frequently depicted as either a raven or an owl with long legs and a regal crown. This depiction reflects his deep wisdom and authority as he commands 26 formidable demon legions. He has intricate knowledge about the Earth's bounties, specializing in the medicinal and mystical properties of various plants and the hidden powers of precious gemstones. This demon, while powerful, is mainly invoked for his vast knowledge and insight. 
Marquis Phoenix, the 37th demon, commands 20 legions and is celebrated for his mastery in various sciences, poetry being his forte. He appears as a singing phoenix with a youthful voice. Summoners should approach him with caution because his captivating melodies have the power to bewitch people. If invoking him, it's best not to do it alone. Avoid listening to his singing and demand that he takes on human form so that he can be controlled. With consistent urging, he usually agrees. Like Marcoges, he too hopes to return to hell after 1200 years. Count Halfas, also known as the 38th Demon, has a reputation for constructing towers and stocking them with arms and weaponries. Also referred to as Malthus, he is an Earl in Hell who governs 26 demon legions. With a distinctive raspy voice, Halfas is typically represented as a stork. He's also known to send his armies to fight or to certain places as instructed by higher ranking demons. President Malfas, recognized as the 39th demon, has the power to construct houses, towers, fortresses, and dismantle enemy structures. Overseeing 40 demon legions, he can sense and thwart enemies' plans and provides helpful spirits to those who call him. Often depicted as a crow, he can turn into a human if asked. He is second in command under Satan. Malfas accepts any sacrifice offered to him, but after receiving the sacrifice, he will deceive the conjurer. In this sense, he can't be trusted. Count Raum, the 40th demon, has the power to take treasures from the houses of kings and ruined cities. Leading 30 demon legions, Raum is usually seen as a crow but can become human if asked. He is known to diminish the dignity of men. He also has insights into the past, present, and future and can mend relationships or spark affection. Fokler, the 41st demon, is a mighty duke of hell who governs either three or thirty legions of spirits. He is described as a man with the wings of a griffin. He has the power to end lives, cause drowning and destroy warships. However, when directed by a summoner, he doesn't cause harm but will be submissive and carry out the requests he is tasked with. With dominion over both wind and sea, Fokler once hoped to return to heaven after a thousand years, but was deceived. Vapar, the 42nd Demon of Hell, commands 29 legions of demons. This duke presides over waters, guiding ships armored with weaponry and ammunition. On request, Vipar can churn the seas, creating storms and illusions of numerous ships. He holds the power to afflict men with festering wounds that can lead to death in three days, causing worms to breed in them. However, when asked, he can reverse this instantly and heal the sufferer. Vipar is often depicted as a mermaid. The 43rd demon, Sabnok, also known by various names such as Sabnok and Salmak, is a powerful Marquis of Hell. Commanding an army of 50 demon legions, he's known for building grand cities, castles, and towering structures, equipping them with arms and ammunition. He also has the power to inflict men with wounds filled with worms or turn them gangrenous. Often appearing as an armored soldier, Sabnok has the head of a lion and majestically rides a pale horse. Shax, the 44th demon, is a distinguished Marquis of Hell who commands 30 demon legions and is often depicted as a stork. He's known for his deceitful nature, and he pilfers treasures from royal chambers, redistributing them among commoners. He can also expose hidden things and grant reliable familiars. When confined in a mystical triangle, his usual gravelly voice turns enchanting, and he will reveal the truth. He will steal anything the conjurer requests, but it's best not to bother him too much, as he dislikes this. He's generally a great liar, and will try to deceive the magician. The magician shouldn't fall for his tricks, but should try to compel him into the magic triangle. Count Vinay is both an earl and a king in the demonic hierarchy, overseeing 36 demon legions. The 45th demon, he's gifted with the ability to distinguish the past, present, and future. He's portrayed as a lion clutching a snake while riding a dark horse. 
He excels in unearthing hidden objects and identifying witches. Vinay wields the power to conjure storms and agitate waters, and has a knack for both demolishing walls and building towers. He also has the power of love magic. Bifrons, known as the 46th Demon, is an earl commanding six legions. He teaches arts and sciences, including astrology and geometry. He has knowledge about the properties of gems, woods, and herbs. He also has the power to move corpses, change their graves, and can even make graves appear illuminated with candle-like lights. Initially manifesting as a monstrous figure, he can transform into a human shape. His name means two-faced and is also a common epithet for the god Janus, so it's likely he had roots tracing back to Janus. Vul, the 47th demon, is a powerful great duke, leading 37 demon legions. He grants affection from women, fosters friendship among both allies and enemies, and has the ability to reveal events from the past, present, and future. He initially presents himself as a dromedary, but later shifts into a human shape. He speaks using the Egyptian tongue, though not flawlessly, and has a distinctively deep voice. Hagenti, holding the 48th rank, oversees 33 demon legions as a president of hell. He gives wisdom to individuals by educating them in various subjects, has the power to turn any metal into gold, and can transform water into wine and wine into water. He's portrayed as a large bull with griffin wings and can assume a human form if summoned to do so. Crocel, also known as Crocal or Crocel, is the 49th demon, taking the form of a mysterious angel who often communicates in cryptic ways. Once belonging to the second hierarchy of angels known as the Powers, he now stands as a duke in hell overseeing 48 demon legions. When called upon, he imparts knowledge on geometry and other arts. He has the ability to warm waters, mimic the sound of flowing streams, and unveil hidden natural baths. Fercus, the 50th demon, is portrayed as a stern, aged man, his lengthy beard billowing like ancient scrolls. He rides a ghostly pale horse, brandishing a razor-sharp weapon, a symbol of his dominion over knowledge. Respected as a sage, Fergus bestows knowledge in practical philosophy, fluent rhetoric, and the arts of logic and astronomy. He's also a seer, using palmistry and divination by fire to interpret secrets. He rules 20 formidable legions of lesser demons. Fergus is a knight of hell and is the only knight from all the 72 demons. King Balam is the 51st demon, overseeing over 40 demon legions. This three-headed demon has the heads of a man, a bull, and a ram, with eyes that burn with fire and a snake-like tail. Known to offer precise insights into the past, present, and future, Balam also grants individuals the ability to become invisible and sharpens their wit. He is often depicted on a robust bear, with a hawk perched on his hand. In some depictions, he appears as a naked man on a bear. Alasser is the 52nd demon, holding the esteemed title of Great Duke of Hell, commanding a force of 36 demon legions. He has a commanding voice and speaks with gravity. He's known for leading people down sinful paths, and he also bestows knowledge on the arts and the celestial secrets. He's depicted riding a gargantuan horse, his face bearing lion-like features with a flushed hue and intense, fiery eyes. Cain, the 53rd demon, is a prominent president of Hell. Overseeing 30 demon legions, he bestows the ability to understand animal voices and predicts the future. Initially appearing as a thrush, he transforms into a man wielding a sharp sword, often standing on smoldering ashes, The 54th Demon Duke Murmur is both a great duke and an earl in hell, commanding 30 demon legions. He communicates knowledge and philosophy and can summon the spirits of the dead to answer questions. Murmur appears as a soldier atop a vulture or griffin, wearing a ducal crown. 
He's heralded by two ministers sounding trumpets. His name refers to soft sounds, emphasizing the association with whispered secrets and the trumpet's call. Orobaz, the 55th demon, is a potent great prince of hell who commands 20 demon legions. He gives truthful insights into the past, present, future, divinity, and the world's creation. Orobaz also bestows titles and positions and can influence both friends and enemies. He's loyal to those who summon him and protects them from deceptive spirits. He initially appears as a horse, but can transform into a man upon request. The 56th demon, Grimori, is a powerful duke of hell ruling 26 demon legions. He reveals knowledge of the past, present, future, and hidden treasures. He can attract the affection of women, particularly young maidens. Gremory takes the form of an attractive woman wearing a duchess's crown around his waist and rides atop a camel. However, even though looks like a woman, he is referred to with male pronouns. Oz, also known as Oso, is the 57th demon and president of hell, commanding three legions. As a high-ranking demon, he can transform humans into any shape, making sure they believe they have truly become the creature they're morphed into. He can also turn any person that the conjurer wishes insane, making them believe that they're a king or a pope. However, these spells only last for an hour. Oz provides insight into divine and secret knowledge, revealing the mysteries of the universe. He often manifests as a leopard. If asked, he can take on a more human form. Amy, sometimes known as Avnes, ranks as the 58th demon and holds the title of president. He appears as a fiery blaze, but later assumes a human form. Skilled in astrology and the liberal arts, Amy can make people exceptionally knowledgeable in these domains. He provides excellent familiars and reveals treasures guarded by other spirits. With 36 legions under his control, he straddles the realms of angels and potestates. The 59th Great Marquis of Hell, Orias, oversees 30 legions of demons. He's proficient in cosmic secrets. He imparts wisdom about the celestial bodies and their effects according to zodiac signs. Not only can he bestow honors and ranks, but he also holds sway over both alliances and conflicts. He has the unique capability to morph individuals into any chosen shape. He's typically described as appearing as a lion with a serpent's tail. Vapula is the 60th demon and rules over a legion of 36 demons, showcasing his might and authority. Among his unique abilities, he imparts knowledge in the realms of philosophy, mechanics, and various sciences. Vapula helps people who want to learn about deep thinking and how things work. As a demon of great intellect and influence, he is often depicted as a creature with the majestic form of a lion, adorned with the wings of a griffin. Zagan, the 61st demon, holds the titles of great king and president with authority over 33 legions of demons. He bestows intelligence upon people and performs incredible transformations, like changing wine into water or blood into oil. One of his unique powers is the ability to turn metals into coins made of the same metal. Zagan is typically represented as a creature with griffin wings and a bull's body, which can transform into a human appearance. Valak, the 62nd demon, is a great president, leading 30 legions of demons. He is known for providing accurate information about concealed treasures. He also has the ability to locate serpents and present them safely to the conjurer. Valak takes on the form of a young, impoverished boy with angelic wings, riding a two-headed dragon. The 63rd demon, Andres, is a great marquee of hell commanding 30 legions of demons. His purpose is to sow discord among people. In the Goetia, Andres is described as having a winged angelic body with the head of an owl or raven. He rides a powerful black wolf and wields a sharp, bright sword. Florose, the 64th demon, is a great duke, ruling 36 legions of demons or 20 in some sources. 
He reveals truthful answers about the past, present, and future, but it's said that he must be confined to a magic triangle to prevent deception. Inside the triangle, he shares insights about divinity, the world's creation, and his fellow fallen angels. Often depicted as a fierce leopard, he can transform into a man with fiery eyes and a fearsome expression. Andriolphus is a marquee resembling a loud peacock. He's skilled in astronomy and geometry. He commands 30 demon legions and can transform men into birds. He also gives expertise in measurements. Camaris is the 66th demon, pictured as a warrior on a black horse. He can find hidden treasures, teach grammar, logic, and rhetoric, and turn a man into a similar warrior. He's a marquee with 20 legions serving him and oversees all spirits in Africa. Amducia's the 67th demon commands 29 legions of demons. He looks like a human with clawed hands and feet, a unicorn's head, and carries a trumpet. He's linked with thunder and his voice is heard during storms. Some say trumpets sound when he appears, and he can play invisible instruments. He's responsible for the loud music in hell and can bend trees as he wishes. Belial is the 68th demon. He's a king in hell who leads 130 legions, including demons and spirits. He was the first angel created after Lucifer. He can give out important positions to men and provides helpful familiars if needed. It's said that those who want to get honest answers from him must give him offerings or gifts. Belial is often depicted with a menacing appearance, having dark, fiery eyes, sharp horns, and cloaked in shadows. Decarabia, the 69th demon, is called a great marquis of hell in some sources, while others label him a king and earl. He commands 30 demon legions. De Carabia knows the properties of all herbs and gems and can transform into any bird, mimicking its song and flight. Typically shown as a pentagram star, he can become a man if asked by the summoner. The 70th demon, sir, is a prince of hell who leads 26 demon legions. He can quickly travel anywhere on earth to fulfill a summoner's wishes, help find treasures, or assist in theft. Unlike many demons, he's not evil, but rather good-natured and neutral. He's shown as a handsome man on a winged horse. Historically, Sir has been summoned for his ability to guide and inform. The 71st demon is Dantalion, a powerful duke. He appears as a man with several male and female faces. Dantalion holds a book in his right hand, symbolizing his link to knowledge. He bestows knowledge in all arts and sciences, reveals deep secrets, and can influence anyone's thoughts. He can also foster love, replicate anyone's appearance, and present visions of them, regardless of their location. He commands 36 legions of spirits. Count Andromalius, the 72nd demon, is a powerful earl who's depicted as a man holding a big snake. He can retrieve stolen items, find the thief, reveal deceit or hidden wrongdoings, and punish those who commit crimes. He can also locate hidden treasures. He leads 36 legions of spirits. And there you have it, every demon mentioned in the Ars Goetia. These 72 demons of Solomon have a variety of powers, from teaching knowledge to affecting love and causing harm. These powers don't mean things like love or science were seen as bad. Instead, they show that everything, even knowledge or love, can be used for both good and bad purposes. These demons are like tools in a toolbox. Just like a hammer can build or break, these demons represent different aspects of life and how they can be used or misused. The stories about these demons teach people to use such tools wisely and carefully. Culturally, the 72 demons play a crucial role. They offer a window into historical perceptions of power, morality, and the unseen world. By studying them, we can understand ancient beliefs, fears, and hopes, as well as the moral lessons of the time. What's more, the demons highlight the human desire to understand and possibly control the mysteries of the universe. 
The fact that they've been discussed and revisited over centuries indicates their lasting impact on human culture and our fascination with the unknown. Even today, some people still show interest in the 72 demons of Solomon. This includes occult practitioners, modern Satanists, esoteric scholars, and even popular culture enthusiasts. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to our channel. It helps the mysterious algorithm do its things so we can continue to grow and make more content like this. Thanks for watching.